Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Texas. I figured I'd give you all a warm welcome as if the timer didn't, uh, as if the weather didn't already. Well, let me give you, uh, my name is Maria Yolisma Garcia. And I'm Liz Magallanes. And we're so excited to be with all of you guys. It's really awesome to see a room full of supportive people who support our youth every day. Definitely. And well, I'll jump right to it. Um, a little bit about myself. I immigrated here when I was three months old. My mother at 20 took the initiative to cross over here to reunite with my father. And so I lived as though I was an American citizen. I pledged allegiance to a flag and I called the United States my home because honestly, that is all that I knew. But it was at the age of 14 when my mother had to sit me down and say, you have to be careful of who you tell. And I asked, I mean, tell what exactly? And she calmly assured me that everything was going to be okay. But it was at that moment that she told me I was undocumented. It was pretty puzzling for me to even understand the concept. Undocumented? I really, it was, it was very puzzling for me. But through the course of time, when I began high school, it is there that I began to understand what it meant to be undocumented. And I had two choices to make. Either I was going to let my status define me, or I was going to make it something to work out of. And so I sought out to seek others who were in my situation and see what we could do to overcome it. I stood boldly as an undocumented student in the halls of Woodrow Wilson High School. <laughs> and I advocated for them, not only through the hallways, but I advocated for all the students in the state of Texas. However, that was not always the case. I was very shy at first, and I started to build walls around myself that would show my potential. It took a teacher to tell me, Maria, you're pretty smart. <laughs> and I said, really? OK. But uh, <laughs> you know, I told him, uh, I, I don't think I am. But he goes, Maria, you are very smart. Are, what, are you, what are your plans for college? And I said, well, I never really thought about college. You know, I'm undocumented. I don't, I don't really think there are any outlets out there for me as far as college goes. And he looks at me and he goes, Maria, do not let a social security number be the reason why you don't apply for college. Do not let that undocumented status be the reason why you stop at grade 12. And that's when I realized that he was right. It was that moment, those words of encouragement that he told me that I could do it. And it's that moment that made the entire change for me after that. Unfortunately, by the end of my sophomore year, he was gone. I had the only beacon of hope in that school leave me. And so I had to muster up the courage to be that beacon of light for all the other undocumented students there. And that's where I met Liz. I told her a little bit about my story and I said, hey, are you going to college? I mean, I'm really confused. Like, I'm undocumented, I don't have a social, like, what is up? And so she told me, she's like, whoa, okay. And then that's where we started that connection, you know? <laughs> And, and so we, we really sought out to see what opportunities were out there for us. And so we started advocating for the DREAM Act alongside powerful dreamers in the state of Texas who were making things happen. And um, yeah, so, and you know, here in the state of Texas, we had that privilege to pay in-state tuition, but um, still there are people who believe that undocumented students cannot obtain a higher education. And there are pieces of legislation today that say undocumented students are not worthy of obtaining a higher education. And that belief really does strike not only Liz and I, but it strikes thousands of students in classrooms and in the state of Texas. And they fall back to that feeling of, is there really anything for me after this, after high school? But you know what? We're here as an example to show them that undocumented students can do it and are doing it and have done it. We have undocumented graduates who have become scholars all over the country and have gone and done wonderful things and continue to shape the lovely state we sit in today. And so, but of course, Nothing, of, nothing would have been possible if it was for my 10th grade teacher telling me that I shouldn't let it, something as my legal status bar me from my education. So we all walk different journeys. And for any of you guys who have run a marathon, you know that that little piece of motivation does really get you to the end of it. 
So be that voice for somebody. Tell someone today that you can do it. Let others know that it's possible. And there are examples of people who have done it. So I challenge you today to go out and tell the world that it's possible that you can do it because it truly is. And if dreamers are out there changing not only what's happening here in Texas, but what's happening in the country, then you need to let everybody know that it is possible. And I'm going to hand it over to Liz before I continue on. But <laughs> thank you so much. And Liz. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. So like Maria, I grew up uh, along the border uh, in Juarez across the bridge, right across the bridge from El Paso, Texas. Um, yeah, so my parents were my first teachers, really. They were my first motivators. They were really my first role models that showed me that throughout my childhood that they were really the driving force behind not only my education, but just my life, right? Um, I think that that's the case for most of us. And then it was not until I was really growing up and going to high school what, that I realized what it truly meant to be undocumented. Um, and it was often difficult to digest because growing up, I didn't, like Maria, I didn't feel any different than all the other kids, but obviously I was. But I was fortunate enough to be in a place, Woodrow Wilson High School in East Dallas, um, where there were supportive people like Maria who really showed me um, and all of our teachers, our administrators, that it was not something of which to be ashamed. Rather, it was meant to be embraced, not to be seen as an obstacle. So this was no longer just a concept. The concept of a higher education was not no longer intangible. It was the seed that our parents had planted in us that was really coming to fruition in this opportunity of a higher education, of a quality higher education. So it's really the educators that you're supporting each and every day that help us, that are sitting, in, that are fortunate enough to be in the classroom with these students that are going through what we went through growing up. So it's crucial that we allow them and we, that we give them those spaces to embrace their place as student leaders and, and turn what seems like an obstacle at first glance into a catalyst for change. So like Maria was saying, it is time for us to support the youth as they take their rightful place as student leaders. Thank you.